his eye is on the spirit. And if he can make sure the birds eat every day and have a nest to live, how much more will he care for you and I? Father, we thank you and we praise you for being our provider. Thank you for being a God of providence. We thank you, O oh God, for not dealing with us according to our sin. We thank you for not rewarding us according to our iniquity. But through your grace and your mercy, O oh God, you continue to love us. You continue to keep us. You continue to bless us. And for that we say thank you. Then we praise you, O oh God. We praise you because we realize you are worthy of all of our praise. There's none besides you. And so, God, we ask now, even as we prepare to share your word, we realize there's no preaching unless you do the preaching. So, as I yield to you, O oh God, I ask that you have your way in this place today. Use me as an instrument of your prayers. And as your word go forth, I pray that it will go forth with power and conviction. That it will be an encouragement to those who need encouragement. And it would be a deliverer for those who need deliverance. A healer to those who stand in need of healing. But most of all, oh God, we pray that if there be any in our midst today, who don't know you in the free part of their sin. We ask, oh God, that they might be convicted and come to the knowing realization that you are the Christ who saved and that they need a Savior. Pray for the backslider that they might be restored. And Lord, when you do these things, we're going to be so careful to give your name all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yeah, your Bibles, if you would turn with me to the book of First Kings. The book of First Kings, the third chapter. First Kings chapter 3. When you have it, we ask if you would stand in honor. God's word. First Kings chapter number three. First Kings chapter three. And we'll begin reading at verse number sixteen. First I'm first Kings chapter three. Verse number we find these words. Then came there two women that were harlots unto the king and stood before him. And the one woman said, O Lord, I and this woman dwell in one house, and I was delivered of a child with her in the house. And it came to pass the third day after that I was delivered that this woman was delivered also, and we were together. There was no stranger with us in the house, save we two in the house. And this woman's child died in the night because she overlaid it. And she arose at midnight and took my son from beside me while thine handmaid slept and laid it in her bosom, and laid the dead child in my bosom. When I arose in the morning to give my child suck, 
Behold, it was dead. But when I considered, had considered it in the morning, behold, it was not my son which I did bear. And the other woman said, Nay, but the living is my son, and the dead is thy son. And this said, No, but the dead is thy son, and the living is my son. Thus they spake before the king. Then the king, then said the king, the one said, This is my son that liveth, and thy son is dead. And the other said, Nay, but thy son is the dead, and my son is the living. And the king said, Bring me a sword. And they brought a sword before the king. And the king said, Divide this, the living child, into two, and give half to the one, and half to the other. Then spake the woman whose the living child was unto the king, for her bowels yearned upon her son, and said, O oh Lord, give her the living child, and in no wise slay it. But the other said, Let it be, neither mine nor thine, but divine. Then the king answered and said, Give her the living child, and in no wise slay it. She is the mother thereof. And all Israel heard of the judgment which the king had judged, and they feared the king, for they saw the wisdom of God in him to do judgment. You may be seated in the presence of God. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, to the hearers, and the doers of his word. Verse 26 says, Then spake the woman, who's the living child, was unto the king. For her bowels yearned upon her son. And she said, O Lord, give her the living child, and in no wise slay it. I want to talk from the subject, Will the real mama stand up? Will the real mama stand up? I mean, let me try it again. The women like the mothers are like the men. Will the real mama stand up? Hey Amen. I got something that got me. Amen. Hey Will the real mama stand up? We look at this passage of scripture, what a classic story we have before us in this passage. And be this as it may, one of the problems with this classic story is that we often learn the primary lesson and fail to see the rest of the story. In other words, we learn the primary lesson that real mothers want what's best for their children. But when we dig deeper into this passage, we find that this incident demonstrates that God had given Solomon the wisdom that he had requested as king. And it further proves that wisdom, real wisdom now, comes from God. Uh, but the story also provides some morals of motherhood. Um, and when we look at it, it really comes from um, some, some, some unlikely sources. And so as we consider the text this morning, I have found that when we look at um, the, 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 the term mother, when we look at motherhood, when we look at what it takes to be a mama, uh, I think we have three morals that we can pick out of these two unlikely women. Right. And so the first moral I see is there is no such thing as a perfect Mother. Let me say that one more time. There's no such thing as a perfect mother. Now, before you throw your shoe up here at me, I, I, I didn't say that to drag mothers down, but I said it to build mothers up. 
Amen. For well, the truth of the matter is, no one needs to be treated with more tenderness than our mothers. You know, I could be wrong, but I'm going to go out on a limb and suggest that perhaps no one is more caring and more conscious than our mother. Sometimes, sometimes we're just too hard on them, and sometimes I believe our mothers are too hard on themselves. Uh, when we look at our text, we learn that the two mothers in this story were prostitutes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, verse number 16 says, uh, it says, there came two women uh, that were harlots. Uh, that word harlot is just another word for a prostitute. And so I, I come back here today to tell somebody that when we look at this passage of scripture, it reminds me of another writing. When, when, when God gave Moses the Ten Commandments, he said, honor thy father and thy mother. And then when Paul wrote the book of Ephesians, he took it a step further. He said, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and thy mother that thy days might be long. And so I come back here today to tell you, it, it, the Bible doesn't say, honor your mother if. The Bible doesn't say, honor your mother if she feeds you. Mother, you honor your mother if she provides. It says, honor thy mother and thy father. And so I thought about this thing on Mother's Day. It's good to honor um, all women. Amen. And I thank God for the women in my life. I thank God for my wife. But if the truth be told, we live in a society where a man may have more than one wife. Oh, let me talk to the man. Honor thy mother. Amen. Oh, mother, we, get, we live in a world. Listen, God bless us. I don't know about you, but he blessed me with two grandmothers. Amen. I was blessed to know four of great grandmothers. I got a host of aunts and women in the church, but the Bible says, honor thy father and thy mother. And let me tell you something. You ought to honor your mother no matter what she's done. Honor her in your living. Ah. When we look at the passage of scripture, this, these two mothers were, were harlots, which tells us that their babies were evidently conceived under sinful circumstances. And now that ought to grab you right there. It ought to make you sit up in your pew and take notice. Uh, and so the question becomes, why did Solomon, the king over God's chosen people, even take time to worry with these two women? I mean, after all these women and the sinful men who paid for their services were living out of God's will. The fact that women like these had access to the king's throne is amazing. But I think I ought to slow down long enough to let you know that as amazing as it was for these two type of women, these sinful women to approach King Solomon's throne, how many of you know it's amazing at the number of sinners who try to access God's throne? Ah, ah. And so Solomon... Solomon was concerned about these women because God was concerned about them. And I want to encourage you that yes, the church should stand for moral purity. When we see sin, we ought to address the sin. When we see sin, we ought to do all that we can to drive it out. That's the role of the church, but we also should stand for forgiveness and restoration. Makes no difference what she's done. Makes no difference where she come from. If she repented, we ought to restore her and love her. No, these two women in the Bible were not living up to God's ideals, yet he loved them. And I believe if some of us had to wait for God to love us based on our performance, if we had to wait on God to love us based on our service, some of us will be flat out of it. Ah. And so no, there's no such thing as a perfect mother. Just like there aren't any perfect any of us. None of us are perfect. Ah, if there's anyone in whom we should be willing to overlook faults, it ought to be our mothers. Amen, amen, somebody. Why should we overlook uh, the faults of a mother? Because she overlooks many of the faults of us. 
When we're discouraged, mama makes it better. When we're mistreated, mama goes to bat for us. When we get in trouble, mama is the first one to bail us out. Let me tell you something, I work in juvenile court and I see it every single day. These young boys and girls are charged with robbery and charged with all kind of heinous crimes and the prosecutor is there uh, uh, accusing them. Attorneys are there, a judge is there. Uh, and, but let me tell you something, there's always some mama sitting behind that. <laughs> Mothers are the first ones to forgive us of our faults and we ought not be too hard on our mother. That's why it pains me when I hear about adult children who live raggedy lives. They forget about their upbringing. They have no relationship with God. They disrespect themselves and they dishonor their parents. It bothers me when they go into attack mode against their mama, blaming mama for all their setbacks. But I came out here this morning to remind you about somebody. Oh, listen, I want you to know who it was that cleaned your snotty nose, who it was that changed your stinking diaper, who it was that ran back and forth up to the school, who it was that sacrificed and went without just so you can have not only what you needed, but some of what you want. And it was and still is your mother who puts herself out for you time and time again. No, she's not perfect, but neither are you. And so we need to lighten up on our mothers. Amen. Amen. And mothers, you need to lighten up on yourself. Amen. So yes, we find here in the passage scripture that there's no perfect mothers. Uh, but I see something else, another moral that I got out of reading this passage of scripture is that God has answers for a mother's problem. God has answers for every dilemma that a mother can go through. And one of the things that uh, I, I miss much about my own mother is that she always had the right thing to say. I'm going somewhere with that. Uh, mothers, I want to caution you. Don't look for stress-free motherhood. Because it doesn't exist. From the pains of giving birth, to the tears that you cried at the empty nest stage, to the grandchildren and beyond, motherhood is stressful. And once again, this is not mentioned to discourage mothers. But there is good news. God is willing and able to assist mothers in the problems that they encounter. Ah, yes, in the text, around verses 9 um, through 11, we find Solomon who asked the Lord, when God appeared to him, Solomon could have asked for anything, but Solomon asked for wisdom. Oh, yes, and I want you to know God granted his request, but God didn't give Solomon wisdom so that folks could stand around at the palace and ooh and ah, but God gave Solomon a wisdom for a purpose. And so in this passage of scripture, it's evident that God not only loved the two prostitute mothers, but he also loved the, the little baby in the story. Oh yes, so look at Daniels, I believe that God dispatched his wisdom to Solomon to save a child. And let me just put a pin right here. We all are responsible for pouring ourselves into some child. The Lord will put somebody, it may not be your biological child, but if you're blessed to be a Sunday school teacher, if you're blessed to be a school teacher, you might just be a neighbor looking out the window. The Lord will bless you to be an influence on a child. Ah. So I thought about something at, 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 at the conference I was at a couple days ago. We talked about how um, uh, we spent maybe the past 20 years, past 20 years, uh, uh, preaching and teaching and coming up with all kind of father and sons um, 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 things to save our young boys. Our young boys are at risk. Our young boys are in trouble. Our young boys are going to jail. We spent so much concentration and put so much concentration on saving our boys until now our girls are under attack. And I want to let you know you got 
expect to be a mother and a father to children that come in your midst. Amen. And then nothing but say, stop. Did you hear what your mother said? Did you, did you hear what your father said? We need to have an influence on children. And so in this story, we see that God blessed Solomon with wisdom for parents back then. But how many of you know that he would have wisdom to spare for the parenting responsibilities of today? And I want, listen, I want you to know that with God, God can guide and provide mothers in all situations. I want to encourage every mother, be it a single mother, be it an adopted mother, a stepmother, a grandmother, even mothers with special situations, you name it, God can still provide you with the wisdom you need to raise your child today. Oh yes, I want you to know that it's okay because God has the wisdom to give you what you lack and God can teach you what to do and what to say in every situation. You know, it amazes me and it impressed me when I hear the stories of how mothers uh, uh, of this age of, of education and, and technology, mothers uh, were still able to make it. I'm talking about those mothers of, of days past, before all this technology, before all this education and resources, mothers were able to make it. Many in my grandmother's era, and certainly her parents' era, didn't have a formal education. In many instances, women, especially black women, were second class citizens. They were uneducated and underemployed, yet they were still able to know how to raise their sons and daughters. They always knew the right remedy. Uh, they always had the right recipe. They always knew how to stretch a meal. They knew how to stretch pennies, and they knew how to call on the name of Jesus. That's what I call mother wit, and that's what many of the mothers uh, of today lack. Because here we are in the 21st century, we have the best schools, the best education, we have the best jobs, we have the best technology, the best resources, yet with all of this we still have mothers and women who refuse to work, refuse to finish school, would rather dump their kids on their own mother. They have no instinct, they have no mother's wit. They hardly even care, but I wish I had a church this morning that will celebrate with me the mothers who take a stand, the mothers who took a stand for their children, the one who relied on God to bless them. And so this story, this story teaches us the morals of motherhood. Oh, there is no perfect mother. And yes, God has the answer. For all of a mother's problems. Let, let me tell you something. Uh, uh, I believe that um, uh, folk get in trouble when they start relying on the world to bless them. Yeah. Relying on the world. Because let me tell you something. We live in a world that's not going to tell you what thus said the Lord. You're subject to hear any kind of thing when it comes to parenting. Uh, you have nowadays when 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 folk ask for the parent, children literally have to acknowledge they got two mothers or two fathers. You gotta be careful about leaning on the world. I want to encourage you today to trust in the Lord and allow his word to be your counsel. Ah, but then there's something else. Not only does this passage teach us there's no perfect mother. Not only does it teach us that God has all the answers to a mother's problem, but there's something else that sticks with me this morning. There's nothing like a mother's love. There's nothing quite like a mother's love. Well, thank God for guys and girlfriends and even daughters and aunts and Grandmother, there's something about a mother's love. Verse 26. Then spake the woman whose living child unto the king for her bowels yearn. Don't a mother yearn for her child? Yearn for her son. She said, Oh Lord, give her the living child. 
Hi, don't kill it. Don't, 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 don't slay it. Uh, I don't know about you, but for me, when I looked at that, it was easy to see who wasn't the real mother. Ah, the real mother in this story would rather see another woman raise her child than to split it in two. And let me just put a pen right here. I commend women who take a stand and know that they are not going to be a good influence on their child. And they would rather find somebody else who can raise them up. This woman would rather see another woman raise her child than to watch her child be killed. And from years of watching my own mother, I learned that you have to be willing to give up something in order to be a good mother. Personal, personal sacrifice yes. is a pivotal part yes, of motherhood. Yes, it begins, first of all, when you think about motherhood, motherhood begins, mothers begin sacrificing for their children at conception. Yes. Ah, it begins by sacrificing her own body yes. to carry around a child for nine months. No child ought to ever get over that sacrifice. I don't know who I'm talking to, but if you're here today and you breathe the air today, you ought to thank God that someone, hallelujah, made a sacrifice to carry you to train a day of abortion. And in, in, in times when, let me tell you something, I, we live in an evil world, but if you're here today breathing God's air, you ought to thank God for the sacrifice of some woman who gave her body to carry you. Ah, we ought to say amen. amen. Not only that, our mother fed us, amen. nourished us, amen. protected us in her body even before we saw the light of day. Amen. And I don't know anyone else who loves us enough that will do something like that. Yeah, yeah. But a mother's sacrifice didn't end there. It goes beyond her body. Mothers, they keep on giving. They give up sleep yeah. for midnight feedings. Yeah. They give up personal goals to help their children achieve their goals. Yeah. Ask yourself how many times you got a new outfit and your mother wore the same old clothes. How many times did she give you her last of the meal? So you could have seconds and she didn't eat anything. I'm talking about the sacrifice of a mother. And so I'm going to try this one more time. Will the real mom please stand up? We salute you this morning. Here's to all the mothers. Here's for all the mothers 
who have to bite their lips yes. when they, until they bleed when their 14 year olds start smelling themselves. <laughs> Here's to all the mothers who gave birth to babies that they'll never see. And here's to all the mothers who took those babies and gave them a home. Will the real mama please stand? Here's to all the real mothers who will put a pinwheel and a teddy bear on their child's grave. Here's to all the mothers of children with severe limitations who got to sacrifice their freedom in order to give their child the service and the love that they need. Here's to all the young mothers stumbling through diaper changes and sleep deprivation, and to mature mothers who have to learn how to let go. Here's to all the mothers today, the stay-at-home mother, the single mother, the married mother, the mothers with money, the mothers without her, Here's to all the mothers. We honor you today. We celebrate you today. We thank God for you today. We were, listen, a mother. Reason why I can love a mother today is because I just believe that a mother uh, reminds us of how much God loves us. Because God is a God of sacrifice. As a matter of fact, when we consider the love of a mom, it's the same love that Jesus extends to us. I feel like preaching right now. I'm talking about a mother who will sacrifice and will go through pain just for her children. She does it because there's a Savior who went through the same thing. He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. He was pierced for our guilt. Anybody know your mama go to bat for you? Even when you're wrong, the whole world can be against you. But a loving mother got your back. Hallelujah, Jesus suffered for our shame. I know there's some mamas out here who cried tears of shame when their child didn't do right, didn't always make the right decision. But ah, hallelujah, how I many you know you only get so low before your loving mama will pick you back up? Here's to all the mothers who mimic the love of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, Jesus laid down his life for us and he took it back up again. But hallelujah, how many of you know it's because of Calvary, the power and the grace of Calvary, that when Jesus died on the cross, he got up with all power in his hands. And I want to encourage the mothers today. Dr. Phil is okay in his place, and Oprah is okay in her place, and the Yama Van Zandt is okay in her place. But if you're looking for a word, if you're looking for a healing, if you're looking how to raise your child, I gave you to turn to the Word of God. Real mothers. Real mothers. They love in spite of. God. It amazes me. I see, I see this every, every day. 